All right, in this video, we are going to go through talking about inventory items, getting kind of more in depth into inventory items, what you can do with them, and where they should be used, as well as taking a brief look at what QuickBooks does with inventory to, to kind of help you out um, in posting correctly to your balance sheet and your profit and loss um, by using inventory items. So I'm first going to go into my items list and go down here to new items and choose inventory part. Okay. Once you select an inventory part, uh, you can change it to an inventory assembly later. So if I go in here and let's just edit this item real quick, you can change it to an inventory assembly later. So if it's a end part and you later decide to buy the individual parts to do the assembly and make that, that part, you can change that later. But for now, we're just going to start with inventory part. Okay, so this should be the individual parts that you sell or individual parts that go into a build for you. Okay, inventory again is something that you hold for a period of time in your, in your warehouse or on site with you or that's in your physical possession. It's an asset to your company. When you purchase it, and we'll take a look at this a little bit, but when you purchase it, it actually raises your assets and then when you sell it it lowers your assets and hits cost of goods sold as well as sales okay so we're going to come up with inventory part gadget abc or let's just say gadget a you can make it a sub item all right so take a look at our little video about the theory of subs and all that fun stuff you can track your manufacturer's part number in here uh, which is great because on a purchase order, for example, if you need your manufacturer's part number to show up on the purchase order so they know what part you're ordering, you can put that in there and have that as an added column on your purchase orders. You can always use units of measure on inventory parts. All right, so I'm going to say that my description is gadget A. Notice once I type it in here and I click off of this, it's going to cap it's going to copy the description for the purchases into the description for the sales, but you can change them at any time. Okay, you have the cost. This is just a default cost. That's not a cost for every, if you purchase it for more money or if you have to add in shipping costs or something to the cost of this. Um, the, the price that you put here is just a default. Okay, you choose which cost of goods sold account it should hit. So let's just say job materials. Okay, you can have a preferred vendor so that when you go in to create a purchase order for this, it will automatically pull up the vendor that you usually buy this for or from okay you put in a sales price this is again a default price and uh, if it's taxable or non-taxable most of these probably will be taxable if they're in state um, parts are usually taxable of course unless you're reselling them to another reseller or a non-profit or something so it's just going to default to taxable um, but you can always change it on the individual transaction Okay, so the income account that it's going to hit, I'm going to have it hit materials income for now. And then notice down here, you do have the option, which asset account is it going to hit? So you can have multiple inventory asset accounts. Uh, if I wanted to say parts inventory versus finished goods inventory, you can have that. Okay, so I'm just going to set it up real quick. Save and close. You have a reorder point here, so it's going to give you a reminder if you fall below that reorder point. So I'm going to say 15. You can put the quantity that you have on hand currently in here. What that's going to do is it is going to adjust. So I put a quantity in here of 10, and I put in a value of, I mean, it automatically defaults to 15, but if I put in a value of 100, it's going to uh, put set my inventory asset up by $100 and then it's also um, going to make an adjusting entry for the other side of that to opening balance equity. Um, normally I say if you're unless you're starting out uh, way down the road like midway through the year or something like that normally just leave these at zero and go in and do an adjustment uh, because then you can choose which account it needs to be adjusted against instead of just automatically going to opening balance equity. Okay so now we're going to go ahead in here and say okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and create. So if I go to my home page, 
I'm going to create a sales order for that gadget. Okay. Gadget A. It's telling me I don't have any on hand. That's okay because I'm going to create a purchase order for it. And they ordered, let's just say, 10 of them. Okay, at a rate of $45. Again, that's a default rate. You can overwrite it right here. $450. It has all the tax going through. And I'm just going to say that this is good enough. So now we're going to go in and create the purchase order for these items. Okay. And create a purchase order for all allowed items. 10, it defaults the rate, $15 an hour. I mean, $15 per unit. So I can keep that default rate in there to send it out to my vendor. Uh, what's great about that is also too, it kind of helps you to keep track in case the vendors raise or lower their prices. So it triggers you to raise or lower your sales price. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and say save and close here. Now notice too, when I did that purchase order, uh, that it automatically pre-filled the vendor for me because I put in that pre that um, that vendor preferred vendor in the item card. Now I'm going to go ahead and receive the inventory with the bill, just as a shortcut here. And it was for Daigle Lighting. It tells me I have open purchase orders. I choose the purchase order. Okay, pre-fills all the information in. I've gotten all the information. Um, pulled over from the purchase order and I can just say save and close or I'm going to say save first. So now take a look. When I did the purchase order, purchase orders are non-posting transactions. It doesn't hit your books yet. But when I have this bill here, it's a posting transaction. So it's going to have a journal associated with it. So how does it affect my books? So let's take a look. And this is on inventory items only, of course. So I take a look at the journal for all you accountants out there. And notice here, that it hits my parts inventory and my parts inventory is going, it's a debit, so it's going up, okay? And then it also hits my accounts payable because I now owe uh, Daigle Lighting $150 for that those parts. So it makes my, my accounts payable go up as well. One thing to consider too when you're doing this, so as soon as I put, enter this bill and post it, it's going to make my average cost QuickBooks does inventory valuation on average cost. So it's going to make my average cost per unit $15 per unit. But let's just say there was some shipping involved in sending over these gadgets, maybe just $20 in shipping. So you can put a shipping uh, expense on the next line item here. But if you have the ability to, you might want to add the cost in here. So it's a total of $170 because that'll tell you the true cost of these items. They don't just cost $15. They cost $15 plus how much it costs to get to you, right? So cost $20 for shipping, total is $170 on the bill. So that means my cost per item was actually $17, not 15, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and recalculate that so it goes to $170. Notice as soon as I change that, it's gonna update my transaction journal here for me. Now that we have the items in, we're going to go ahead and create an invoice. Okay, it tells me I have an open sales order for this invoice. I'm going to select it, okay, and I'm going to create it for the entire sales order. Okay, it pre-fills, all the information comes across, 10 order, 10 invoice, the rate of $45. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now this is what QuickBooks does that's neat behind the scenes. If I look at a journal here, it has a whole bunch of line items because it's telling me every transaction that happens behind the scene, everything it does behind the scenes for me to calculate and make sure that I am keeping my books clean. So the first thing is that it goes to accounts receivable. All right, so they owe us $484.88, accounts receivable, not straight to sales, right? So what we hit with sales is we hit $450 in income, and then also we owe $34.88 in tax payable. Okay, so accounts receivable goes up, sales, which has a credit balance, goes up, and payable for sales tax goes up. So that you pretty much would understand, right? That's what you see on the invoice, but what QuickBooks does behind the scenes is it takes care for you of the cost of goods sold. So your inventory, you know, this transaction, this one, and this one down here, that's, that's all fine and dandy, but wait a second, I got rid of some of my inventory, right? 
So what QuickBooks does behind the scenes with inventory items is at the same time, it takes the average cost of the item and it takes that amount out of inventory. So the $170 you saw there, $17 per because of the shipping, $170 comes out of parts inventory and also raises our cost of goods sold. So that I can see my sales, my cost of goods sold, and here's my net. All right? So that is just a little bit more in-depth on inventory items.